All right, so I'm getting my sketchbooks out, and this is sort of going to be a foray into, again, me trying to find a good setup for working outside. So I have an insane amount of art products in my house. Every time I see something cool, I pretty much go out and buy it. Um, so I've just been revisiting products I've sort of set aside because I've seen other artists using them and enjoying them. And so I'm like, well, you know, maybe we'll revisit some of these other things. So I think I showed everything else that's in here in one of my other vlog videos. So I'm just going to start where I left off with that in my small journal and then I'll get into my bigger one. So this started because I really just wanted an excuse to use these. And if you haven't seen these before, these are Caran d'Ache gouache and it comes in a handy case so that if you do like something like this, you, it's easy to take outside, carry around and use. It's not too messy. It's got a great place to mix. And these are not acrylic gouache. So, which is probably pretty obvious since they're in pans, but that means that they can reconstitute with water. And it just seemed like, all right, maybe I'll give these a go. Let's see if I like these again. And so this is what I ended up making. And this is sort of just a garden greenhouse. And I think it's pretty much, it's all the Caran d'Ache. And I think there's just a few Neo colors and maybe some colored pencil in there. And I'm finding that I don't know if this is worth carrying around and it's not opaque enough for me and I'm thinking that I'm probably going to need to stick with acrylic gouache and I do like having some transparent background that this would give me but I don't know with the weight of this and the size if this is worth carrying. It might be that maybe I'll get a smaller set of gouache to have of just a few colors just to put quick washes and things in but it really didn't it didn't excite me, and this is the other thing to notice. If you don't actually like using the product, um, it kind of doesn't really matter so much what the effect is, I think, at least for me, because I'm very sort of tactile and sensory when it comes to art products, that this wasn't really fun to use, so it's not going to make me want to paint, which is sort of counterintuitive to the whole painting process. So, And then this was just an experiment. I think this might be all. This is colored pencil. And I think the rest of this is probably Caran d'Ache. And that was just a quick sketch because I started getting into wanting to put little houses in my work. And it's just kind of funny because I stayed away from any kind of architecture for so long. And it's not that I want to do really detailed houses. I almost want them to look like maybe they were just quickly sketched in or a kid did them even. Um, but this isn't really my favorite in this book, but it does remind me that this is not a composition that I like. And the reason is I tend to like a lot of layering here so that I can play with spaces and I like all this to be looser. So I'm not necessarily, and this is another thing, I'm not going to fix everything in my journal that I don't necessarily love. This is going to serve as a reminder that at least for the time being, this is not a composition that I like or maybe something like this could be like a small vignette in a bigger painting and then there's all that other stuff that i like around it you know and then this was um i did these outside of my garden it's just a colored pencil and some tombow marker and i was just outside walking my cat so yes i walk my cat um so i've got the book and a pencil and i'm not sitting and i'm just quickly sketching while he's wandering around thinking he's going to catch a squirrel or something. Um, and then I just did another one of these. I don't always, um, or I'm not always able to identify things that are in my garden. So when things randomly grow in there, I put weed until I can figure it out later. I don't necessarily love the Tombow markers and I'll show you another one later, but I, I wanted to give them a go because I have the full set. So I went through and I swatched things and I looked for color combinations that I like, but I just, it has too much of a clean edge and I really like organic scritchy things like colored pencils and crayons and things like that. And I just don't know if I can get the Tombows to work in a way that I want them to. And then this was just a 
swatching page for all those Tombows just to see what colors and I was testing out different ones and then I just came back in with a colored pencil because I just don't like all these marker swatches the way they are. So I came back in with my um, Prismacolor colored pencils and just drew messy lines over the top of them. And the other thing that's cool is it gave me some color combinations that I like. You know, this olive green with this gray color. I don't know if it's going to pick it up very well, but it kind of has this cool quality to it. So that was fun. But the other thing to note, and I think you can see it better on this page, the Tombow markers bleed through even if you don't wet them down. It's not a ton, but they just tend to, I don't know. I'm not a fan so far. I reserve the right to change my mind though. And so then I did this spread. This was me trying to try out the Tombow markers to see if I could come to some way of using them that was enjoyable because, and the reason why I'm pushing the Tombow thing, it's an easy supply for me to take out, outdoors to sketch and things like that. So I'm trying to revisit things. But the only thing I really liked was when I added water to them, which makes the bleed through even worse. So I don't know, I, might, if, I guess if I was gonna do that, I would have to skip pages or something like that. And I really liked this color combination down there. And that's pretty much all I got out of that. Negatives that I noticed that I don't like, because this isn't really about criticizing your art and going, oh my God, I don't like these things, I need to fix it. But noticing what you don't like is so important to just notice and accept it and move on to the next thing. Um, because it's going to tell you what's not for you and you need to know both what is for you and what's not for you, at least for the time being. And that's going to help you with your voice or your style or whatever it is that you're looking for. So I wish this was lighter up here. I could come in with white paint, but you know, I'm not going to fuss over it too much with a sketchbook. And there's a really harsh horizon line here and I just... I don't like really distinct horizon lines. That's part of the reason why I think that hill one that I did, it's just too, I don't know, it's too static. I like horizons that are sort of mushed around and broken and I'll show you that in my other sketchbook. So then I started doing still lifes and I'm not actually setting up a still life. I have like way too many kids and not enough time to be dealing with all of that. There's just no way. They would come in and just randomly take things, I think, to use as cups. Um, so I was just going onto Pinterest and finding quick photos, and I'll give you some tips for that later when I talk about reference photos. But I was just coming in and using my Kimberly pencil, and I found this is my favorite thing to use for quick sketches and still lifes because it's chunky. and. I wish I could find more chunky colored pencils. I know the Derwent drawing pencils are chunkier and then there's the Krita color, but I don't, I'm gonna get a few of each of those and see because I like colored pencils, but I really like the chunkiness because it makes everything looser. Um, Cause if you look at the next one, I did these with colored pencils and you can just tell there's still some looseness in it, but it's just, this is so much fresher than this is, you know? And so what I did was I noticed that, right? And so I come back to my pencil and I do this. This is a little bit tighter than I would like um, in some places, but it's loose enough and chunky enough that I'm happy with it. So I'm noticing that, again, at least for the time being, that I'm enjoying these sort of chunkier, looser lines. And so again, I took that in and I thought, okay, I'm gonna do a house instead of a still life. So I went in to Pinterest again and I found a house that looks like it would be fun to draw. And so I went in and did this and I'm really happy with it. So, and I think that's everything in that one. And then this is my bigger sketchbook. Trying to think of where I left off. Okay, so this is my bigger sketchbook, and this scene was from an Emma Carlisle Patreon. And what was cool about that was it was a drawing exercise using multiple different photos, but I decided to keep those all on the same page and sort of make all these little vignettes and parts of the scene in this sort of wonky, spooky way. 
and it gave me an idea for the way that I'm doing reference photos, which I'm going to show you later, by just kind of putting things together intuitively. So this was really fun. This isn't a way that I normally draw or use materials. And this is kind of what got me started on a drawing kick because I'm not usually much of a drawer. Uh, but this was really fun. And I think part of it was the colored pencils and I just never really thought of sketching with them. And so that sort of turned a corner in my brain and I was like, you know, it's an opportunity to do something different and I don't know what it is. It just, it made me instantly want to, to draw more loosely and sketch things and all of that. There's something about a specific like drawing pencil, like, like grabbing a 2B and an HB and all those things that makes me tighten up because I'm trying to like think about what a drawing should be in those circumstances rather than just draw how I want to draw. And there's something about the colored pencils that makes me think in my brain, like in my subconscious, like you can just do whatever you want. That came over to this and this is when I started having this idea of sketching houses because I've been trying to think about paintings lately and I always like this juxtaposition of things. So there's contrast in different ways. It's not just value contrast or contrasting colors, but contrasting, you know, materials. There's marks next to smooth paint, but this is sketching next to paint and that's a pretty big, it's subtle, but yet it's a big difference. And I just really like this way of just coming in here and making marks and I think I did this whole thing in like a half an hour I just came in with some paint really loosely and I had the photo on my phone it's just from Pinterest and I went in what I would do differently next time is I would do the house more loosely because I find I don't want the painting to be about this house this specific house I want it to be more of a symbol and the less specific you can be with something kind of the more of a symbol it becomes if that makes sense and I feel like this is just a little bit too specific that it's almost like it's supposed to be a picture of this particular house like it was a commission rather than um, something like anybody would put on their wall started experimenting. This was actually paint that was left over in my palette. It was still wet because I, I have sort of a made up stay wet palette over there. And the paint had gotten really fluid from sitting there. So I just wanted to use it up. So I came in and scribbled in a house really quickly. And I was just playing with that idea of getting it in quickly and more loosely. So it's a less specific house and just came in and played with all that fluid paint and making marks with my colored pencils or drawing with my Caran d'Ache crayons and just moving through that process of adding paint and taking paint away, which is right here because it leaves some transparency and just little pops of color to move the eye around. So this one was really fun and I liked how this one came out. This one I did on Halloween. This is, I need to go in with a little bit more line work, but this is the house, the Owens house in Practical Magic. So I just went online again, used a reference photo, and then just kind of loosely put all the greenery in the yard. And that's all, I think it's just paint and colored pencil and Caran d'Ache. That's kind of what I'm trying to stick to. I was using oil pastels a lot, but it's like with the stickiness, I know they have spray for it, but um, I try to stay away from all the aerosol things because it just, I don't know, gives me headaches. I wanted to do animals one day, and so all I did was I have some books on my table. I have my kids' bird book and Pinterest and stuff, and so I just opened up different things and just kept grabbing a different color and um, drawing, and I'm really happy with the way this came out. I like all the contrast and the marks up here. Like I can see this going somewhere. I could see like wanting to do this on paper and ripping something like this off and like collaging it onto a painting and doing it that way. So this is a little bit where things are going right now is I just keep wanting to draw houses and just this variety of 
marks and painting and having sketched in pieces and painted pieces and I I don't know I just really like that juxtaposition I like the way that you can see the paper through here I like that it's really free and it kind of looks like a kid did parts of this but then it's more refined in other areas so there's this is all the same stuff it's paint color pencils and um, Caran d'Ache Neo color crayons. I don't think there's anything else on here. And then this is the last one in here. And I did this one yesterday. And again, this is trying to get even looser and freer. This is actually a kid's playhouse, probably for rich people, but it's one of those like kids cottages for the yard. And it's like, yeah, right. Um, and I just came in and I added, I'm playing with adding other line work and it's good to take um, things that you like that you've already done and bring them into another thing. So I already knew from this, I liked putting an arch in here. I like the way it looks and I don't know, I just really like arches. And so I put that in here. This was, I think, part of the picture, and I'm going to talk about this in reference photos, but this is not the arrangement of the pieces and parts in that photo. So I hope that this maybe gives you some ideas of how quickly you can create. So if you have kids, because oh, I want to do a whole video on this, because it can be really hard to create when you have kids, especially when they're young and getting into everything. Um, so if you have a way of making stuff that you can get in quickly, it can be really helpful. So these are the paints that I got in this week that I wanna swatch and check out while I show you them. I'm hoping that these are sort of the my plein air painting answer. And the reason is there's a lot of gouache out there, there's a lot of acrylic gouache out there, but it's hard to get them in sort of these already pre-mixed colors. I can buy a red, I can buy a blue, I can do all that, but this is primarily to make it so that I really don't have to mix. And I believe this was about $50 is what I spent on this and I just got them off of Amazon and there are 24 paints in here and they're 20 milliliter tubes. So they are, I have small hands, but they're good sized tubes, so they're not tiny little gouaches. So if you kind of do the math, it's about $2 a paint tube for gouache, which is actually pretty inexpensive. So I just want to come in and start swatching some of these and seeing kind of how they move. So this feels like it's a, like a soft body paint in terms of consistency, which is nice. It's very matte like it should be because it's gouache. I just want to get a sense of what these colors are, what the range of the colors and the values are, just to make sure um, that they're going to work for me. That's one. This actually moves. If you wet your brush just a little bit ahead of time, like look at how much that tiny bit of paint how much coverage you can get out of that. That's wild. The only bummer is there's no light pink. So I'll show you. So this is the light pink that Liquitex Basics makes. And I really like it for mixing in with other colors. And there isn't that color uh, in there, which I might be able to buy it separately. Maybe the Turner makes it. But so far, that is the only sort of disappointing thing, but I can live with that. The one thing I am noticing now that I've done this is the color out here isn't necessarily super accurate to the color that's in the tube. And I don't know if you can see this, but this is a very sort of saturated bright coral and this is more of a muted mid-tone. It's not as light as the pink that I would prefer, but I can, I can live with that. Let's try putting some on top of this. So this color, I don't know as if I would use it on its own. It's a very sort of seafoam green, but it looks really nice when you put it on top of other colors. So this is another thing. When you put a more neutralized color next to a saturated color, especially when you put the 
more neutral color over the top. It just has this quality that makes things look like they glow a little bit, which is really nice. This is a really nice color. I will definitely use this. This color, when you put it next to or on a warm, there's something about a blue gray. I don't know what it is. It just, I don't know. It's just a beautiful color. This is a really saturated red. I'm kind of surprised because to be honest, when you buy a product that works out to only be like $2 a tube, you wonder what it is that you're actually getting. And I have to say, these are really, really, really nice paints. Now these are acrylic gouache. So again, these are gonna dry permanent. So if you're looking for something that can reconstitute um, that's regular gouache and this isn't going to be like that. It's going to dry the way acrylic paint dries. It will be matte and it has a little bit of sheerness to it a little bit. You can see the paint lines and things like that, but it's permanent once it dries. It's a little bit darker than the paper. Closer it's darker actually. And you can see how opaque it is if you don't want to blend it like, what's a good one? This is nice and dry. You can paint thick with these if you want to. And it's really opaque to what's underneath it. And that's kind of how I prefer paints. I like them when they're opaque and then I can just, I can always make them less opaque, but you can never make something more opaque. So that was fun. I definitely love these. It is gonna be hard paring down. 24 colors so that I'm not taking 24 colors out, but I think I can get it down to probably 12. I don't use purples, so I know I can leave that there. I always think it's funny because the one color so many artists don't like and don't use is purple, and I looked up a whole thing about that actually, and there's something about purple not technically being in the visible light spectrum and all this stuff. Like it's the only color that's not. So I always wonder if our intuitively like our brains go, it's not supposed to be there. Yeah, so I like these a lot and these are a really great value for the price. All right, now I wanna show you guys how I have been using reference photos. And the key is to just you don't have to find everything you wanna paint in one photo. And now if you are a super realistic painter, this very likely isn't gonna work because shadows are gonna be in different places and things like that. I don't tend to deal with that. I paint more intuitively. And so where shadows and things like that are, aren't super important to me. But instead of looking for the perfect picture, and this is the thing as I think sometimes we get hung up on, looking for something to draw and looking for a picture that's super inspiring or the whole thing is amazing. And we don't necessarily need to be stuck with one reference photo. So that's my first tip is you can take pieces of things. I'm showing you this is on Pinterest on my phone. I think this is showing up. So this is a house I'm not gonna worry too much about what else is in the photo. So I'm just gonna come in and just loosely sketch this house. So for me, because I like to draw and paint loosely, perspective and things like that, um, I'm not, I don't wanna say picky because it's not really picky to have that be an important thing, but it's just not important for me in the way that I want things to look. I want things to be a little bit off. And so the only way I can do that is by just getting in there and kind of throwing it, throw, <laughs> can't talk, to get in there and throw it down loosely. Otherwise I'm gonna pay too much attention to the whole thing and it'll just be too tight. Now I'm looking at this and I'm actually starting to get other ideas. So at first I was gonna say what you can do if this picture doesn't have enough of what you want in it is you just take the part that you want and go find another photo that's got something um, in it that you want. Maybe you want a road or a path in there. Maybe you want um, maybe a gate or a picket fence that looks like that. You could just 
stick that in somewhere. It really doesn't matter where. So this looks pretty cool and I'm just gonna be able to put it in over here. And I kinda like to sometimes draw the edges. So that's the boundaries. I don't really care how many planks it is, but I do care how big it's gonna be and I don't want it to get too big. So just quickly making shapes. I actually don't know that I want to put these other pieces in here. I kind of like this just looking like this. It's a little bit more abstract. I'm going to leave that like that. And then there was some other stuff in that original photo once I started drawing this and I started noticing other things that I wanted to bring into this. And this is the thing is you can stick things wherever you want to. Like I don't need to make this wall right here. It's a cool wall. So I'm just gonna use the inspiration for that wall now and just say, okay, I'm gonna just connect these things, right? And so this is the wall. This is where I'm pulling the inspiration from, but it's not where it is in the picture. And I can come in and put just a few of these stones. I don't need to fill the whole thing in I like suggesting things without necessarily saying the whole thing. And maybe a few that are touching or overlapping. I think that's enough like to suggest a wall. And then there's some other scritchy trees up here. So I'm looking and I'm like, you know, where should I put something like that? And maybe they can be peeking out from behind, you know, the fence and just these sort of wild things coming up. And what else could we pull from here? I like all the layering that's happening over here too. It's kind of hard to see. In this photo, I'll put it in my Pinterest if you want to look under inspiration just to see what the photo was for this. Um, but I like all the levels of layering here. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm not going to necessarily um, put them just as they are, but I'll come in and maybe just sort of divide this into abstract blobs so that when I come in with paint, I kind of have some idea of where I'm gonna put things. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. This is my palette. It's kind of a homemade stay wet palette. And I like to try to use a brush that's bigger than necessary so that I stay loose with it. And I've got a variety of colors. This is mainly to mix greens or maybe yellow ochres and things like that. And to come in with just some of those. And I tend to like to start pretty dark first and just get some contrast going to move my eye around. Sometimes if you do that too and you add water to loosen it up so that you can lift the paint, it's pretty cool because you don't quite, it's like writing with invisible ink. You don't really know quite what you're going to get. This is dry enough that I can come in with some of my dry media again. Just to go back to this photo, 
Again, this image will be on Pinterest, but you can see all these kind of levels and layers happening in the landscaping over there. And that's kind of what I like in these paintings that I'm doing. And so I'm gonna bring some of that into here using marks in different ways with my crayons and pencils. So I've just been keeping everything in here because it makes it easy to grab and pull from. And I tend to like to work with subtler colors first and then put some pops of saturation in there. So this doesn't really matter, this is intuitive. So this is just about, you know, I don't really like that harsh straight line over there, so how can I kind of loosen that up a little bit? This is my favorite Prismacolor pencil so far. It is a 70% warm gray. So this is fairly light right here and I just kind of want something darker that's gonna stand out. And I just wanna make maybe some more horizontal marks. It doesn't really matter what they are. Just want something and these ones I want to go over the paper and off the page just like that so I just wanted to come in and maybe grab some things again and just put some more marks this is more of like a burnt sienna color it'll give it some pops of saturation the house is really dominant over here so if I'm gonna put pops of saturation I'm gonna put it over here so that it draws the eye in sort of this general direction but this is sort of what I like, is making all these sort of little bundles of areas with marks going in different directions. And so I'm just gonna come in and make a little shrub or tree or two that are kind of in the shape that I like. And this I got from my greenhouse sketch. I ended up really liking it and it's made its way into a few other things now. So again, if you like something, do it again somewhere else. It's fine to copy yourself. I think I'm just gonna lighten the sky a little bit and then I'm gonna leave this as is because it's, it's good enough in it that it can inform me and I can pull from it when I wanna go make a painting. And this doesn't, again, need to be a finished piece. It's just an experiment or an exploration that I might want to use bits and pieces from in something else later. I just want to knock this sky back a little bit because the whole thing was getting a little bit too middle value-y. And that's it. So I hope this gave you some ideas about how you can work a little bit more intuitively with reference photos and so you're not wasting time looking for the perfect thing. In some of the other sketches that I've shown you, these were both from the same photo. This wasn't like that. This was from a different photo from this, which was a different photo from the yard. I mean, really, you can use whatever you want and put them together however you want to. You get to decide what you wanna do with your art. I hope that you have a chance to make some art this week and thanks for watching.